Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came out to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab, and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, anoint him for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. Here ends the lesson. That portion of the Psalter appointed to be read on this fourth Sunday in Lent is the 23rd Psalm found on page 612 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever.
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Here ends the lesson. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back, able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man, but they kept asking him, then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that he now sees nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that everyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind and they said to him, give glory to God, we know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you, and how did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man... We do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and you are trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir, 
Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Two of this morning's readings from our lectionary are about fulfillment through the unexpected. One of them probably isn't all that surprising to us because it's part of the story of God we have heard all of our lives. It's integral to the story of Jesus and how we understand who we are as his followers. The other is always a surprise. No matter how many times I hear it, it shocks me. In the first reading, the prophet Samuel goes out looking for a replacement for the fallen King Saul, the king God told the Israelites they really didn't want to begin with. Samuel comes to the city of Bethlehem, the city of Jesse and his sons. He invites Jesse and his sons to join him as he makes a sacrifice to the Lord. When he looks at the sons of Jesse, he says, seize Eliab, probably the eldest of Jesse's sons, and thinks to himself, this must be the one the Lord has chosen. But God says to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. So Samuel goes on to the other sons, Abinadab, Shammah, and the others. None of these is chosen by the Lord to take Saul's place as king. So Samuel asks Jesse, Are you sure this is all of your sons? Jesse says, that's all of them except for the very youngest, but he's out watching the sheep. So they send for the youngest, David. And when he comes into Samuel's presence, the Lord says to him, rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Surprisingly, God doesn't choose the eldest or the strongest to take Saul's place as king over Israel. Our human minds would expect that these elder sons would be the most experienced, having lived longer and probably helped their father in ways the youngest hadn't had the opportunity to. Instead, God chooses David, the youngest, the one who was left to live with the sheep out in the pastures to watch over them and protect them from bandits and wolves. It's not a very glamorous job. <clears throat> God's choice probably doesn't seem all that surprising to us. The story of David, who will become one of the great kings of Israel, father of Solomon, ancestor of Jesus himself, is part of our story. As followers of Jesus, the choice of David is part of our spiritual DNA. And despite his later flaws and failures in the story of Jesus, of which we count ourselves a part, David is a hero. But when he was chosen over all of his brothers, it was a very surprising choice. In our gospel reading for today, generations after the choosing of David to say, take Saul's place, Jesus heals a man born blind as he sits by the side of the road. Now the fact that Jesus heals this man to show his disciples the glory of God's works isn't all that surprising. We're used to stories of Jesus healing. Think of the story of the leper who comes to Jesus, kneels before him, and says to him, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reaches out and touches the leper, saying, I do choose, be made clean. Or remember the story of the centurion, a Gentile, who comes to Jesus asking that his servant be healed. When Jesus says that he will go and heal the man's servant at his house, the centurion replies, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only speak the word and my servant will be healed. This time Jesus heals the man's servant, from a distance. What's surprising in today's reading is the way that Jesus heals the blind man. 
This is the part that always gets me. Jesus spits into the dirt, mixes the dirt and saliva to make a paste, and spreads it on the man's eyes. Why in the world would Jesus have to go to such lengths, and with spit of all things, to heal this blind man? This is where it's important to notice that later in the story, when the Pharisees are questioning the nameless man born blind, the fourth evangelist tells us it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. If you do a little research into the Jewish Sabbath laws, you'll find that there are 39 categories of activities that are forbidden on the Sabbath. Most scholars break these categories down into four orders of work. The order of bread, the order of garments, the order of hides, and the order of construction. If we look into the order of bread, we find one particular activity described in Hebrew as losh. This activity is usually translated as kneading. And that makes sense since it's found in the order of bread, right? Many scholars, though, think a better translation of the word would be amalgamation. That's really what we're doing when you knead bread dough, bringing the flour and yeast together with a liquid, in the case of the first century Israel, probably water. So losh is technically a forbidding of bringing together wet and dry ingredients to make a new substance, in the case of bread, flour, yeast, and water, to make dough. What seems surprising at first, that Jesus makes mud with his own saliva to heal the man born blind, is in fact Jesus healing by directly violating the Sabbath law forbidding mixing. We know he didn't have to make the mud to heal the blind man. He healed the centurion's servant from afar. The only possible explanation is that Jesus was intentionally ignoring the law of Losh to call the Pharisees' attention to what he was doing. God does surprising things all throughout the scripture. Some of them look and sound surprising to us. Others have become so much a part of our story that they don't seem all that surprising anymore. But God never does something unexpected without a reason. It seems like madness to the human mind to choose the youngest son to be king over Israel, the son with no experience in statecraft, business, or war, to choose the son who has been left babysitting the livestock. But as God tells Samuel, the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. It's also strange that Jesus would follow a complicated path, making mud and spreading it on a blind man's eyes, then sending him to wash the mud away in order to effect a healing. But he had a reason. The same might be said about the strange and unexpected situation we find ourselves in today. That we're used to come together week by week to worship in this place, Maybe these surprising circumstances will turn out to have a purpose. Now, I'm not one who believes that God acts as a kind of puppet master, making everything that happens happen. I don't believe this novel coronavirus was sent by God with or without a purpose. What I do believe is that no matter what happens in our world, God can use it to our advantage. What good things might come from our change of lives because of this pandemic? We'll become much more sensitive about how we transmit illness, that's for sure. Maybe going forward we'll see a drop in flu and cold cases because we've become better at hand washing and avoiding spreading that kind of thing. Maybe we'll learn to depend more and more on one another, having faced this challenge together. Maybe the increasing separateness of Americans can be turned back just a little bit. And I know, for me at least, but if there was any question about the importance of coming together to worship, it's been answered. Maybe our communities will learn not to take for granted the simple things like family and church. I can't tell you all the things God will use this experience to teach us. Some of them will be so specific to individuals that we'll never know about them. I can tell you though that I'm sure when we come out the other side of this experience, the world will be changed. Our communities will be changed. We will be changed. And I know that because I know, as the Apostle Paul tells us, we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called.
according to his purpose. Now let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for the Episcopal Church, for our presiding Bishop Michael, for our own Bishop Key, for our Rector Carl, and for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, for this gathering in spirit, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for Donald, our president, Kay, our governor, and Sherman, our mayor. Pray for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of Him. Pray that they may find and be found by Him. I ask your prayers for the departed. I ask your prayers for our parish members who are sick or troubled and others you may wish to remember at this time. I ask your prayers for the men and women in military service and those on duty around the world. I ask your prayers for the Church of the Holy Comforter, for our staff, our parishioners, and our ministries. I ask your prayers for the Episcopal Day School, Laura McCartney, Headmistress, and for the board, the staff, and the students. I ask your prayers for the Episcopal Kyle Home. Sylvia Holloman, Executive Director, and for the board, the staff, and the residents. I ask you to pray for God's protection for our nation and the world from those who seek to spread violence, death, and chaos, and from all the dangers of illness and infection which surround us. I ask your prayers of thanksgiving for all those celebrating birthdays this week. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Lord, hear the prayers of your people, and what we have asked faithfully grant that we may, may obtain effectually to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. 
We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace, which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, 
Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Give us your peace. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, life is short, and there is too little time to gladden the hearts of those around us. So be swift to love, and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.